your first line of defense is to get yourself to confession and to be renewed and to be put back into right relationship with God. Welcome back everybody. Today is Wednesday of the first week of Lent and we are on Meditation 101 of Divine Intimacy. So we're going to share with you what stood out to us and why. And first of all, just want to say thank you so much for your participation. Janelle, I think we have some of the greatest online communities that are out there in the Catholic world. Mm. And uh, you guys are so kind. You show up, you watch the videos, you comment, you participate. We really appreciate that. But not only that, uh, so many of you support us financially that allow us to serve you this way. Uh, you who support us monthly, pay it forward and allow us to give full-time hours to these videos. And we want to say thank you so much for your generosity and help. And if anyone wants to help us also financially on a monthly basis, um, you can head over to canonjanelle.com. We'd really appreciate the consideration. So today we continue on sharing with you what stood out to us and why. So again, Father Gabriel starts out with a really beautiful prayer just to like bring us into the presence of God. And it just, it stirred something within me because, um, anyhow, I'm just going to read it for you. O Lord, inflame me with your holy zeal so that I will no longer be able to tolerate in myself the slightest thing which is displeasing to you. I remember when I was like 18 years old talking to somebody who was um, kind of a leader in ministry. We had actually went to World Youth Day in Rome together in the year 2000. And I remember him telling me like, we need to come to a point where we are like, just so, um, I don't know if the word was disgusted or so appalled by our sin. And because I remember at the time, like I wasn't appalled by my sin, but I feel like over the years, the Lord has brought me to a place where there are certain sins that I am appalled by that I've committed, but there's still others that I'm not. And so I feel like, help me to no longer to be able to tolerate in myself the slightest thing which is displeasing to you. So that's my prayer. Venial sin, like mortal sin, goes counter to God's will, although with less serious deviation. While it does not destroy charity, it is opposed to it and therefore diminishes its fervor and vigor hindering its development. This is the disastrous effect of deliberate venial sin committed with the realization that it is displeasing to God. Father Gabriel brings our attention to intentional venial sin. You know, we can sin in a venial way unintentionally, but here is like when we intentionally do something with our will that's displeasing to God and it's not mortal sin. And it has serious, it has negative effects in our life. Um, if you consider a, your toothache, maybe tooth decay. I asked my brother-in-law, he's a dentist one time, what's the worst case scenario of not getting that cavity filled? And he's like, well, it's, uh, it's got to be pulled out. And he's like, then I said, well, what if you don't pull it out? And he thought, uh, well, then I'll get infected. I said, okay, then, well, then what? And then he saw where I was going and he said, well, then I guess that infection can spread and go up the nasal cavity, go to your brain and you can die. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what I wanted to hear. <laughs> Tooth decay doesn't seem that serious, but left unchecked, unattended, can lead to physical death. Now, I have a feeling that that's pretty unlikely for us. Most of us do not leave tooth decay to that point. But I think it's much easier to leave venial sin unchecked that can lead to spiritual death. And just like with dental hygiene, you can prevent tooth decay that cavity by regularly flossing, watching your diet, brushing your teeth, avoiding sugar, especially right before you go to bed. So there's certain things that you can do to prevent tooth decay, and there's certain things that you can do to prevent spiritual decay, like regularly praying, knowing the virtues and exercising the virtues, going to the sacrament of reconciliation. These going and receiving the Eucharist, asking the intercession of the saints, these things, the spiritual life of Catholicism helps us to stay away from intentional venial sin, which is displeasing to our Lord and left unchecked has, can lead to spiritual death. It is not unusual to meet souls who having at first surrendered themselves to God with sincere fervor, afterwards let themselves fall into continual carelessness, indifference, voluntary omissions and laziness because they have given in to selfishness and sought their own comfort. Did you catch the first part of Father Gabriel's words there? It's not unusual. Sometimes we read this warning 
and we think, oh, uh, that's not why, that's not for me because I'm the exception to the rule. Here's a newsflash. Please don't take offense, but this is the truth. You're not that exceptional. <laughs> and you're not that exceptional, nor am I. We have all fallen short of the glory of God. All have sinned. And so when we hear someone say, it's not that unusual, yeah, that's us. That's all of us. It's not that unusual for people to drift towards comfort and forget about denying ourselves and seeking Jesus. Mm -hmm. And so do not think that this could not happen to you. I remind myself continuously that I'm always one decision away from stupid. That being sin. It comes, unfortunately, rather easy to me. And this is because I have concupiscence. Now, I recognize and I praise God for some spiritual growth in my life. But I know that in certain situations, when I'm tired, when I'm hungry, uh, when the kids are acting out, th these are my weak points. And it's not unusual for me to fall during these times. Um, so just, just a warning. Father Gabriel continues, They become incapable of making the generous efforts required to advance on the way they have started. Their spiritual life is reduced to a king of lethargy, which is not yet death, but which has none of the freshness and vigor of a strong, healthy life. It lacks the fervor of charity, for this is continually being lessened by deliberate concessions to venial sin. So I have a couple of points to make about this. Um, first of all, isn't it wonderful when you see people who've made a resolve, like who've committed to something and you see them living it out? And I just think, wow, that's so amazing. That's like God's grace alive and active in that person's life. And so like when I see like this Lent, when I see people choosing to turn away from sin and to die the, deny themselves, you know, people who are following the Exodus 90 program or the Magnify 90 program that started at the beginning of January, or maybe some of you started it here on Ash Wednesday. I just think, wow, that is so amazing. And I'm like, so happy that God's given you the grace and that you've been willing to receive the grace. Um, the other thing that it makes me think of is, I remember this line that our, our parish priest said to us a few years ago, and he said, your first line of defense is confession. So if you find that you're in a state of lethargy, you just can't get out of it. Your first line of defense is to get yourself to confession and to be renewed and to be put back into right relationship with God. And so, yes, I think we're going to confession this Sunday. Yes. I'm excited. I mean, we did just actually go <laughs> last week too. But I mean, why not? If you can go, why not? Okay. Just go. Okay. Now, why, now do we give the backstory? Why do we go to confession this Sunday? Oh, sure. Have to. <laughs> well, we got, a, we got a text from our parish priest, who is also Ken's brother, um, just telling us that there's going to be a visiting priest at our parish so we can go to confession to him. Because we don't go to confession to my brother. Yeah, and that's okay. <laughs> and, and this is exciting. So we get to go yeah. to confession this Sunday in our parish. Mm -hmm. Quite different are the venial sins which we commit through frailty or inadvertence. It is not unusual for God to permit these falls, and he does so precisely to give the soul this practical knowledge of its nothingness, and to anchor it firmly in humility, the foundation of all our spiritual life. In regard to faults of this kind, St. Therese of the Child Jesus felt that we can be sure they do not grieve the good God, because they are not caused by a will intent on sin, by indifference or by coldness. They spring from the weakness of human nature. This really caught my attention, the distinction between intentional venial sin and now in this quote, the unintentional venial sin that results from the frailty of human nature, particularly was how St. Teresa of the Child Jesus says, this kind doesn't offend our Lord. I actually struggle with that one a little bit. Um, let me know your thoughts, because I always consider all sin offending God in some way. And maybe that's the case. Maybe it's an offense that it's different. But nonetheless, this is also a consoling thought from a, a doctor of the church. So sometimes we can be harder on ourselves than God is on us. Sometimes, not all the time. And this is a good reminder. We, we are weak. We have unintentional venial sin that we didn't mean to do. And our Lord does not turn away from us in those moments. 
But he allows these moments to show our weakness of human frailty and just to say, yeah, this is what happens when you don't depend upon me. Mm -hmm. It's a good reminder that we need him. Yeah, because even unintentionally, we sin. Mm -hmm. So in everything, we need Jesus to save us. We are completely dependent upon his grace, and so we cast ourselves upon his mercy. If because of our weakness, it is impossible for us to avoid these little daily venial faults of inadvertence or frailty, it is important to know how to detest them and to make generous reparation. As to deliberate venial sins, we should be firmly resolved not to commit them for anything in the world. So how do we respond to these inadvertent venial sins? Well, we should want to detest them, not not to want them. But he even, Father Gabriel says that we can make reparation for them. Mm -hmm. So I think that's wonderful. We've talked about reparation for sins so many times on Friday's video. We talked about uh, fasting and mortification, these ways that we can do to make reparation for sin. So if you missed that video, you can go back to it. So that's it, friends. Thanks for watching. Share with us below what stood out to you and why. And if you would like to become a monthly financial supporter and help us in this work that we do online, we'd be very grateful. We can't do the work without help from other people. So thanks for the consideration. You can head over to KenandJanelle.com if that's a possibility. We will see you. I will see you tomorrow.